This is PV Magazine Live from the Smarter E 2024. I'm Maria Maish, Energy Storage News Director, and I'm joined here by George Hilton, Research Manager at S&P Global. Hi, George. Hey, hey, nice to be here. Great. George, uh, can you please tell us uh, how the situation in the su battery supply chain looks like at this point? So a year ago, we were talking still maybe about undersupply. What is going on at this point? Um, well, I mean, the industry is completely flipped on its head. Uh, it has put to bed any idea that there is uh, supply constraints that we had throughout uh, after the energy crisis and uh, post-COVID. And we're now in a place where we have oversupply at every level uh, and subsequently prices are falling very quickly across the industry. Uh, are there any remaining bottlenecks in the supply chain? Um, very few. Uh, there is talk slightly about uh, transformers being a little bit difficult. Um, but on the whole, I think it's a great time to be a customer because you can get whatever you want uh, very quickly and at low prices. So. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, and uh, so you mentioned also falling battery prices. Um, that's, uh, uh, the, the, the fall has been remarkable over the, the last year, really uh, huge. Uh, so how much longer can battery prices keep? It's, it's a good question. Um, I don't have a firm answer. I can't give you a number of years, uh, unfortunately. I would love to be able to do that. Uh, I think we're just in a place where we are waiting for something to break. Um, the prices, lots of people think that uh, companies are losing money at these prices. Uh, that's something I could agree with. Um, how long can companies lose money? Um, it's, a, it's a difficult question to answer. It's, you know, you've got to know the balance sheet and inside the companies. Um, so yeah, we're, we're waiting for something to break, whether that's on the uh, supplier side amongst the the real companies that are driving down the prices, are they going to run out of money? Um, or whether that's uh, against their competitors who are frantically trying to keep up with lower prices, whether they lose market share and make an exit. Uh, one of those two things is going to happen, uh, and that's when we'll likely see prices stop falling, I imagine. And is consolidation on the card? Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's the biggest risk for the industry at the moment, um, consolidation and uh, uh, a smaller number of uh, companies that have greater market share. Uh, well, uh, that's uh, definitely not good for all the suppliers that we are seeing here. But what are maybe the key um, technical innovations that we are seeing at the, this year's Smarter eShow? Yeah, I mean, there's, there's quite a few. We're seeing uh, containerized systems that have much higher energy density. I think that's driven by larger cells. Um, we're seeing a broader range of products becoming available for developers to, to, to buy. We've got DC blocks, uh, AC blocks, fully integrated systems. There's a, there's a broad range now. Um, so, so yeah, more generally, it's a great time to be a customer. You've got low cost systems, uh, lots of choice um, and uh, growing demand. So uh, it's, a, it's a nice time to be a developer, I think, not a nice time to be a supplier. But is it also a good time to join uh, when we look at the revenue potential for, uh, for battery storage systems? Uh, obviously, this will be market dependent, but um, there might be some developers who are still waiting uh, for prices to fall further down. Do they risk um, missing the opportunity uh, to uh, have a stronger business case and maybe risk joining too late? I mean, with such a quickly growing market, um, it's always risk risky to wait. Uh, we've seen first mover advantage being really significant in some markets historically, like the UK. Um, ha however, the revenue piece is very different depending on which country you're looking at. We're seeing some signs of saturation in the UK market. Um, we're very far away from that in other parts of Europe, especially frontier markets like Greece, uh, Bulgaria, Romania, etc., cetera, um, and Poland as well, particularly. Um, and so the revenue picture is very different depending on where you look, but um, the opportunities are, the, the market's growing very, very quickly and there's opportunities everywhere. So would you say that the UK, which is a leading market for batteries in Europe, uh, is it on the growth trajectory or not really? Uh, not really, <laughs> to put it bluntly. Um, the UK is suffering from a bit of uh, too many projects for not enough market size. Um, there is a huge project pipeline in the UK, something like 30 to 40 gigawatts. Uh, 
peak demand in the UK is about 35 gigawatts. So that puts you in into perspective how many uh, energy storage projects have been proposed. Um, the markets aren't lucrative enough to, to support that. And so we will see lots of those delayed, canceled, mothballed, et cetera. Um, and we have seen revenues in markets that exist today subsequently declining. Um, and so that's one of the areas of Europe that's more difficult uh, to, uh, to build an attractive business case today. And uh, how important is then uh, to uh, like seeking help to build a business case? So like maybe uh, seeking some of the providers, third party providers who can provide uh, software analytics uh, and everything to build up a business case in a market that is increasingly saturated. Yeah, I mean, it is critical. We see we see the role of the optimizer becoming much more uh, important. Uh, these root market providers are becoming more sophisticated, uh, markets are becoming more sophisticated, and the way that that's structured alongside uh, project financing is really becoming quite critical for building uh, attractive business cases that are low risk for the investors. Um, that's the real critical uh, thing that I think developers need to really pay attention to is the risk of projects. Um, I think there's a lot of merchant risk at the moment and uh, developers could get stung if they take on too much of that. And in general, what what is there to expect in terms of market growth in the coming two to, to five years? Yeah, the market's growing super fast. Outside the UK, the market is growing really fast. Uh, it's driven by huge, hugely strong fundamentals. Um, we'll see 60% of installed capacity for generation being intermittent renewables by 2030. Um, and historically in Europe, we haven't built enough storage alongside that. And so your storage really needs to play catch up. Uh, and so whether that's merchant, uh, whether that's uh, through uh, procurements, uh, uh, centralized level like we're seeing in some countries, um, we will see growth uh, as, a, as a response to that in energy storage for sure, right through the decade. Well, that sounds good. Many thanks for your insights, George. No worries. Pleasure.